So that's Rod Donald Hut. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm out walking on uh, the Tiara Pataka trek today, uh, going to Rod Donald Hut. Um, from the car park, it's roughly about an hour to the hut and an hour back again. Uh, you're looking at about maybe two and a half to three kilometres walking. And so there's some uh, uphill, some downhill. Yeah. Uh, so that's the most direct way to get to the hut, which is um, up that track and over the hill. Um, we're not going to go that way. I'm going to take you down the alternate way is when you walk down the road. Um, and then there's still a driveway that goes up to where the house is, uh, Rod Donald Hut. So we'll go down that way and then we're going to walk back over those hills on the way back to the car here. Yeah. Well, that's the uh, car park on um, the saddle in between Little River and um, Port Levy. Um, there's space here for like maybe about 10 cars at the most. And so um, the tracks that you have from here, you have um, Tiara Pataka heading to Mount Herbert going that direction. And over in the other direction, that's uh, the other half of Tiara Pataka, and that's going to Rod Donald and ultimately around to Hilltop Tavern. Well, we're walking 2.2 um, k's down this gravel road, uh, down to the driveway to get up to the hut. Uh, and then we'll walk up to the hut from there. Uh, so it's 2.2 k's back down to the hut um, and you're walking down this gravel road. Um, you've got native bush growing on both sides of the road down through here. Um, it's been replanted over time. Um, you just have to keep your wits about you because this is quite a busy road between um, Port Levy and Little River and so quite a few cars come down here. Um, they've got the right of way, you have to get off the road if they're coming down. Yeah, but it's relatively easy walking, um, it's a nice flat graded road. Um, just keep an eye out for cars. Uh, that's looking up to the top of the saddle. So uh, there's looking down the valley towards Little River. Uh, that's called Western Valley. Don't know why, because it's actually heading north north south and then over here in the distance you can see uh, Rod Donald Hut um, it's look it, it's an old farm uh, site over on the side of the hill over there yeah that road over there you can see going up that big clearing on the hill that's the driveway up to Rod Donald Hut and we're just continuing down the road So you can see it's quite a narrow road, that's why you've got to keep an ear out for those cars. Here's a bit of a clearer view of that uh, driveway going up to the hut. I'm about halfway to the hut. Another car going down the hill, another one coming up the hill. There's the hut just over there on that spur line. That uh, shed that you can see is the woodshed for the hut. The hut's just over the top of that spur line, you just can't see it.
Well, you're about uh, 300 metres away from the bottom of the driveway. It's just right over there. There's a few small uh, streams and rivulets running down the sides of the hills. Um, I wouldn't trust the water, um, even if you filter it or treat it. Uh, too many stock around here. Um, there's a um, onga onga tree there. Onga onga is uh, endemic to the um, Port Hills and Banks Peninsula, so you get it all over the place up here. So there's the road running up the side of the hill there. Yeah, you can see there's quite a bit of water running uh, down off that pipe from down the top of the hills. Again, like I say, I don't think I'd trust it for drinking water. Well, the Rod Donald hut, um, they actually uh, own the hut itself. But they also own a whole lot of this land around here. Um, and what they're doing is they're um, gradually replanting it in native trees. And you can see in that paddock there, um, there's some native trees planted down there. So the kind of trees that they'd put here would be coastal podocarp. So you're talking totra trees, kahikatea trees, uh, possibly remo, uh, manuka. All those species would have been here before Europeans arrived. So hi, I've made it to the um, driveway up to Rod Donald Hut. Um, just a couple of points, if you're going to walk down that uh, road, um, I would be inclined to walk down the road, not up. Um, it's quite a steep road. You might find it quite hard going trying to walk up to the top again to get back to your car. Um, I'd be inclined to walk down to here um, and then walk back to the cars along the top of the hills. It's much easier doing it that way. Um, the other thing is you just have to keep your wits about you because there's quite a few cars going up and down that road and uh, don't wear headphones or listen to music um, because you need to be able to hear the cars coming behind you and if you've got headphones on you won't hear them um, and like you know there's a whole lot of quite steep turns so you don't have a lot of um, view down the hill yeah um, nice surface to work on Take, took me about maybe 25 minutes to walk down to this point it'll be about another 15 to 20 minutes to walk up to the hut so about 45 minutes all up yeah um, it's another way to get to the hut I'm um, not the official way but it is another way so uh, this is the old driveway up to the um, to where Rod Donald hut is uh, Rod Donald Hut was an old farm building that was um, converted and renovated and turned into a nine person uh, backcountry hut. Uh, it's about maybe 200 metres up this driveway. Yeah, so we'll just head on up. Climbing up the hill to the hut. It's quite steep. There's some of the uh, plants and trees that they've planted on the hillside here. So the uh, road up to the hut is a series of switchbacks back and forth. Um, they're really steep to start with but then they kind of even out a wee bit but still still quite a hard uphill climb. There's the uh, gateway down there. Here's your first view of Rod Donald Hut. So uh, that's the toilet here at Rod Donald Hut. Um, it's got one of those really fancy European um, composting toilets. So it turns the waste into a compost and then they scatter it in particular places all through the forest around here. Yeah, much uh, saves them from having to fly it all out by helicopter every six or seven months. So as I was saying before, it's a converted uh, farm building. Um, it was a cottage at one stage. Uh, there's an outdoor sink there with water. Uh, set of benches for you to sit at 
some seats to sit on outside the hut. So officially this is a nine bunk hut. Um, there's a bunk room up on the second story and so those are the nine bunks there. But um, I'll show you when we get downstairs. There's actually another couple of bunks down the stairs here in the um, living area of the hut. The uh, bunks have these handy water bottle holders right next to them. It's a nice feature, isn't it? Uh, there's a couple of um, posters there telling you about um, hut etiquette because you get lots of like first time trampers and huts and they don't have any idea. So that's the mud room there um, where you can put your boots and stuff. There's some hooks on the wall, uh, lots of newspaper for the fire and some spare firewood. And then looking down to the main part of the hut itself couple of tables, a uh, lovely pot belly stove just here for um, fires at night time and it pumps some heat out I'll tell you the times I've stayed here wow man uh, there's a bench there with uh, water piped into the hut and there's another cooking area over on that side um, with water piped into it as well so that's the other cooking area there, bench, uh, water, yeah. So this hut has solar lights, uh, both upstairs and downstairs. Looking into the main part of the hut, uh, you can see there's two um, beds, which are also benches for the tables. So that gives you an extra two bunks in this hut. Um, people don't realise that. That's the view looking down to Little River, down at the bottom of the valley there. There's a um, map there that has a whole lot of information about the tracks over here. So that's looking back up, uh, up the track and the track zigzags up, up the hill to the top of the spur and then it heads to um, back over towards um, the saddle going down to um, uh, Lake, uh, Port Levy and uh, um, down to Little River. These bags of uh, are full of gravel, um, they're for dumping on the track as you head up the hill. Um, if people take a bag up and dump it then eventually the track will have gravel all over it. Um, I'm going to hump one up there with me and then I'll just put it on the track when I go past the place where it needs some gravel. Yeah. So there's the uh, gravel, I um, haul two bags of the stuff up here and put it down on the track and then you just have to stomp it down flat. On the last stretch down to the hut. There's a track marker there, there's not many of them on this track. Uh, it's a series of switchbacks going up the spur line. This is uh, the third one. Yeah, gaining altitude slowly. Slowly making my way up. Uh, that's the uh, top of the zigzag sections of track. Um, then there's just like a little kind of sidle for about 20 meters up to an old four-wheel drive track uh, Those are totra trees right there Mountain totra. They're not as big as the um, totra trees you get in a podocarp forest because of the conditions up here They'll get much bigger than that though So uh, there's the four wheel drive up at the top of the bush track uh, and then you just head off to the left and you're heading for um, uh, the saddle um, over at Port Levy. So you turn off the track here and start heading downhill. You 
just followed this track up to the uh, main route of Tiara Pataka and then that takes you up and over the hills. So you can see down to Lake Forsyth there uh, and just barely over the hills to the uh, Southern Ocean over there. So we're just heading up to the lee of that wee bit of forest up there. Yeah, climb over the fence just here and head up to that ridge line up there and then ultimately that takes you to uh, Mount Fitzgerald and then from Mount Fitzgerald you're walking around to Hilltop um, on the Tiara Pataka track so from here it's roughly five to six hours depends how fast you walk uh, it's 13.5 k's to Hilltop Tavern 25 minutes downhill to uh, Rod Donald Hut. It's a steep climb up from uh, Packles Hut, but um, we're heading off to the left here. Um, after this initial hill, which isn't quite so hard to climb up, we're dropping down on the other side all the way back down to the car park and where the car is. So we'll head off. So we're heading that way up the hill. Um, you head up over that uh, low ridge line there. And then down on the other side, you're dropping down to Port Levy Saddle. Uh, so it's probably about maybe a 30 to 35 minute walk from here back to where the car is. Yeah, so all up it's roughly 55 minutes to an hour to do the whole whole walk up from the hut. And then there's a track junction which takes us off to the right and then the track off to the right goes down to the hut. Yeah. The uh, track goes down through all that gorse over there. So that's looking down to Little River and um, this end of Lake Forsyth. The uh, Tiara Pataka track heads up over those two hills over in the distance there. There's a sign for the Banks Peninsula Conservation Trust. So there's the apex of uh, this track, uh, just up there by the trees, and then we start um, cycling down towards uh, Port Levy Saddle. Going up over the apex of the track. It's Mount Herbert there in front of us, uh, highest uh, peak on um, Banks Peninsula, uh, 939 metres above sea level, I think, something like that. A uh, piece of remnant uh, native bush there, that's what the whole portals used to be covered in, that kind of bush.
yeah, all got burnt down when the Europeans came um, for farmland to get all the trees and bush off the hills. That's Port Levy Saddle way over there. Uh, and you can see the cars, the cars that are parked there. So that's where we're heading. And the track just goes uh, down the hill here. And then uh, along and along the ridge line and then to the car park. Yeah, so uh, Mount Herbert Massive. A, uh, a crossing point at the uh, apex and you go across this ridge line and then drop down on the other side. Steadily making our way down to um, Port Levy Saddle. Uh, we're just following an old four wheel drive track and it's got um, track markers, um, snow poles hammered into the side of the track. Yeah, that's a mountain totra tree. Um, these hills would have been covered in those kind of trees um, prior to the European arrival. Yeah, that was the predominant tree type up here, uh, mountain totra. Uh, it's looking across over there to um, the saddle where the car park is. It's where I'm heading to. Just uh, walking down the track. I just got passed by a uh, guy who's up here checking all the predator traps. There's uh, predator traps all over these hillsides up here. On the home stretch, I'm about maybe 500 metres away from the car park. Yeah. Uh, you see lots of these logs up here on the hill. Um, they were totra trees that got burnt down by the farmers when they first arrived. You can actually see that they're all scorched. Uh, that wood is so hard, those, those trees were burnt down oh, over 150 years ago now. And like, they're still there, you know, and they're still relatively intact. That wood is really, really hard. That's looking down towards Port Levy. Um, you can't really see very clearly because of the pine trees there. Yeah, but it's one of the um, outer bays of uh, Banks Peninsula. Almost there. So there's the car park over there, a couple of hundred metres, just to be out finished. back at the car park. Uh, so you can actually mountain bike the main part of the Tiara Pataka basically from here to Hilltop. Um, it's a bit rough in places and you have to carry your bike a few uh, places as well because the track's too narrow. So it's 2.5 kilometres, uh, 50 minutes walk from here to Rod Donald Hut. Uh, and about six and a half hours to walk all the way round to Hilltop Heaven. That's the road heading down to Port Levy and there's Port Levy in the distance there. 